Hi, I'm Daniel Souza and welcome to App Theory Academy. This is part two on the GRE Quant Fundamental Playlist. Today we're going to be looking at LCM, GCD, even and odd integers, and prime numbers. Let's get started. Your LCM stands for least common multiple, right? Now, what you know is from the first lecture, I explained to you what are multiples and factors, right? So for this example, let's take two integers. Now you should know that LCM can only be found for two or more integers. Let's say 30 and 75 for this example. Now, by definition of a multiple, you know that when you take 30 and you multiply it by all the numbers on the integer line, they will all be multiples. But what happens is in LCM, you will only consider the positive multiples. So only consider from here after zero on the RHS. So you, mul you will multiply 30 by one, two, three, four, and so on till positive infinity. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write all the multiples. 31 is 30, 32 is 60, 90, 120, 150, 180, and so on and so forth, right? Now what we're going to do is, we are going to write the multiples for 75. How we're going to explain LCM is we're going to go in the reverse order, right? LCM, we're going to do MCL, multiple, common, and least. So first write down all the multiples. Now 75 multiples, 75 1 is 75, 75 2 is a 150, this is 225, this is 300, 475, 375, and so on and so forth. Right now, we've written down the multiples. Next is C, common. What are the common multiples here? 75, do you have anywhere? No. 150, do you have? Yes, you have 150. So what we're going to do is we're going to circle 150. All right. Next, do we have anything anywhere? See, 30 into 10 will be 300. So you will have 300 somewhere here. And you can circle this here. I've not written it all down because it takes time. So 300 will also be circled. And then you will have further on. You'll have 450, you'll have the common ones as so. Now what you need to do is you've circled the common ones. Now for the final step, you're going to select the least out of these common ones. So if you have 150 and 300, which is the least? 150. So implies 150 is your least common multiple right now what this basically means is this right you have your multiple your lcm is 150 what this means is for 30 and 75 if you have 150 on both the sides this number when divided by 30 and 75 is the least number which when divided will give you a proper integer it will not give you 4.5 3.6 like that way because 150 by 30 is 5, right? And, and 150 by 75 is 2. There's no smaller number which will give you perfect integers when divided by both these numbers. That is basically what is LCM. Alright, now before we move any further, a common doubt that everyone has. Is GCD and HCF the same thing? You tell me. G is greatest, H is highest. They both mean the same. C is common, C is common. Literally. And D is divisor and F is factor. Which also means the same thing. Now, if you're one of those people who gets confused which is the divisor, what is the dividend? Let me just clear that up quickly. So when you do division, right, you have of the form A by B. Now each of these has a name. The one on the top is always known as the dividend. And the one below is the divisor. Now how I remember it is that the top number always gets divided and disintegrated into many parts, right, of this amount. So the number ends. That is how I remember that the top one is dividend. And also if you're familiar with stocks and shares, right? Companies give you dividends, right? They distribute the profit to all the shareholders, right? So the dividend is distributed among company shareholders. So this is how you can remember this. Now, HCF. So HCF we know is highest common factor, right? So how are we going to explain it? FCH. So let's take two integers. Let's take the same two, 30 and 75. Now. Like we explained the LCM, let's list out first F. Let's list out all the factors. Now, factors of 30 are 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 10, 15, and 30. Now, you'll get better with listing the factors with time. 75 is 1, 3, 5, 15, 75. Right? Now, these are all the factors. Now, let's go on to the second thing, the common ones. Let's circle out all the common ones. So you've got one is common, since we know one is always a factor of all multiples. Now you've got three common, okay, you've got five common, and you've got 15 common. So now we have all the common factors, 
Now what we're going to do is we're going to find the highest one. So out of 1, 3, 5 and 15, 15 is the highest. So that means 15 is your HCF or GCD. Right? Now what this means is that if you have two numbers, 30 and 75, your HCF is the highest fat number which you can write in the denominator which divides it into perfect integers. So if you write 15 here and you write 15 here, write 15 once you get 2 and here you get 5. Now there's no higher number which will divide both these integers into perfect integers. Right? So this is what is HCF. Now just in case you're confused between LCM and HCF, I'll show you how I differentiate them. Now the way I see it is that LCM is a top property whereas HCF is a bottom property. To explain this, let us consider 30 and 75. We've already calculated that the LCM is 150 and the HCF is 15. Now, when I say top property, when you write a fraction, right, you will write this number on top. So LCM becomes 150 and 150. So what you're saying is when you find your LCM, it is that number, it is the smallest possible number basically, which properly gets divided by 30 and 75, right? So here it becomes five and here it becomes two. There's no other smaller number which will get perfectly divided by both of these numbers. And your HCF, what you're doing is you're finding the opposite. You're finding the highest possible number which can properly divide 30 and 75. Here it becomes 2 and here it becomes 5. Right? Now, there are many interesting properties of LCM and HCF and applications. But I'll be doing a separate video on those. Now, let's move on to even and odd integers. Alright, since integers are a subset of numbers, even integers are the same as even numbers. So basically, any integer that can be divided by 2 perfectly is known as an even integer. So now on the integer line, I've circled the even integers. Something that is very important on the GRE is that you remember that 0 is also considered an even integer. Now usually you know that 0 is neither even nor odd, right? But on the GRE, you know that 0 is always considered an even integer. So if you get a problem and they ask you to substitute all the even integers in a given range and 0 falls in that range, definitely put in 0. Now, apart from this, you have a couple of properties of even and odd integers that are important for the GRE. Alright, now in order not to waste time, I've written them down and I've written all the examples. So let's just run through them quickly. So the addition properties, you've got even plus even is even, right? 2 plus 4 is 6. Even plus odd is odd. 2 plus 3 is 5. 5 is odd. Odd plus odd is even. 3 plus 7 is 10. 10 is even, right? Now the multiplication properties, even into even is even. 2 into 4 is 8. Even into odd is even. 2 into 5 is 10. And odd into odd is odd. 3 into 5 is 15. Now, these, you can prove them with any other numbers and they will all work. You don't need to memorize them, but if you know them at the tip of your tongue, it's much better. Now, let's move on to prime numbers. Prime numbers are a really cool set of numbers that have a really cool set of properties. It is tested a lot on the GRE, so it's very important to have your basics strong. By definition, a prime number is known as any number greater than 1 that has just two factors, the number 1 and itself. To understand what a prime number is basically, let's look at a simple flowchart. So, just pick a number, first see if it's greater than 1, is it? Great. Now go on down, see if it has just two factors, and the two factors have to be 1 and the number itself. If that is also true, then you know that your number is prime. These are the first 10 prime numbers. You've got 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23, 29, and so on. I've just written the first 10 prime numbers. Now what you do is pick any number from this list, right? Let's say 13. So 13. If you have to find the factors, you will find just 13 and 1, right? Now, by the definition of the prime number, you know that the factor has to be 1 and it has to be the number itself and the number is greater than 1. So this qualifies as a prime number. But notice we've left out 14, 16, 18 and so on. If you write 14, right, the factors, now the number is greater than 1, so it qualifies for the first round. Now, secondly, you write 14 ones up, which is also good. But you know that you can also write it as 7 twos up. So the factors are 4, not just 2. So this does not qualify as a prime number. Now, there are three important things that you need to remember when it comes to prime numbers. First one is that 1 is not considered as a prime number, right? It starts from 2. Second, the list of prime numbers is infinite. It goes on till positive infinity. And third one, if you've noticed from the list, all of these are odd numbers and will continue to be odd numbers. The only even number is 2. So 2 is the only even prime. And it will go on to be so. Because if you take any other even number, like 4 or 6 or whatever, you can break it down as 4 and 1. But since they're even, you know they're always 
they are always divisible by 2 so they will have a minimum of 3 factors so 2 is the only even prime in the list of primes now since we are discussing about prime numbers let us limit our discussion to greater than 1 that's why I've cancelled this part of the number line because we don't need it now I've marked the first 5 prime numbers here on the line that is 2, 3, 5, 7 and 11 now you might wonder what are the other numbers called right because 2, 3, 5, 7 and 11 are known as primes what is 4, 6, 8, 9, 10, 12, 14 etc called they are known as composite numbers now a really cool property about composite numbers is known as the prime factorization so what it says is that every composite number can be factorized into a unique combination of prime numbers so 4 can be broken down using only prime numbers so 2 into 2 correct so you've got 6 you can say 2 into 3 right 8 you can say 2 into 2 into 2 9 you can say 3 into 3 and 10 you can say 2 into 5 now these are all the prime factorizations note 8 could also be written as 4 into 2 or 8 into 1 right now in here you 2 is a prime number short but 4 is not 8 and 1 both are not prime numbers so all of these are acceptable factorizations for 8 but 2 into 2 into 2 is known as the prime factorization because it uses only prime numbers and the cool thing is that any composite number you know greater than 1 can always be broken down into prime numbers all right so this is part 2 where we looked at lcm gcd slash hcf even and odd integers and their properties and prime numbers in part 3 i'll be looking at fractions how you add them subtract them multiply divide and what are a by b by c by d and mixed fractions so make sure you check that out too these lectures are completely free and for the benefit of the student so what i want you to do is if you like this video make sure you give it a big thumbs up subscribe to my channel and make sure you share this right spread the knowledge download them share them with your friends repost it on facebook do anything you can cheers make sure you guys hit that subscribe button to get access to all my videos i release new lectures every thursday cheers